So hi everyone. Uh, thanks again for joining uh, for joining us for our uh, you know continuation of our series with the doors um, at the doors within us podcast in a collaboration with the African Diaspora Network, profiling uh, amazing entrepreneurs within uh, the builders of Africa's future. Um, uh, I want, first of all I want to thank every single one of you for listening to. Uh, some of our episodes, even just one episode or many episodes with this collaboration. Uh, we have had some really, really uh, interesting stories from this great cohort 2022 uh, from you know the African Diaspora Network, Builders of Africa's Future. And we're just elated, I'm just elated that you have been kind enough to listen to our, some of our amazing guests, you know, some from Zambia, Ghana. We also have an, uh, another Ghanaian um, uh, amazing entrepreneur with us today, but I'm just so happy and uh, I feel honored that uh, some of you listeners have been uh, very uh, consistent to to listen to some of our episodes with this great card uh, at the African Diaspora Network. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we 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 uh, as we run up, uh, this is our last guest today, uh, Caleb Edwards, um, based in Ghana. Uh, we just want to thank you for just being uh, a diligent and just a consistent listener with the Doors with Nars podcast, especially for this collaboration. The so, pleasure is mine. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much, Caleb. Um, Caleb, uh, just for us to to, to start up, um, just tell us uh, a little bit of how you grew up. Um, uh, I, I know uh, Accra is a popular mm -hmm. it's a popular city, but can you just give us where you where you where you were born and just how your your childhood experience was like? Right. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm happy to be here. Um, I, I was born in Tema. It's a suburb in Accra. And I, I, my, my mother was a nurse and my dad was a trader. So I'd accompany my dad to the electrical shop every now and then when I'm on vacation. And my mom had a poultry farm at home. So firsthand, I was taking care of poultry from childhood. I could help to pick eggs, I was selling the neighborhood. That's like everyday duty. I had to sometimes clean the uh, hand coop before school or something. And with my dad too on weekends, I'd join him to, to the shop to speak to clients, to see how he deals with his money, record keeping and all of that. I think that's what sparked the interest of um, entrepreneurship. And right from my basic school, I had basic school in Tema, yep. um, senior high school out of Accra, yep. and the university in, the, in, in Kumase. And I think right from, I'd say university days, I'd always been interested in commerce. So yep. even, even, even in the university campus, I, I had a side gig we, um, to print all these, um, what do you call it? Print and um, flyers and banners for student politicians and churches and stuff. So, I'd I'd, I'd give them the co I'd take a contract, uh, get a graphic designer to put something nice for the candidate or church or something, and then I go to town to print at very affordable prices. So, I mean, it's been with me to always start some commerce every now and then, and I, I can trace it back from my childhood. That's amazing. That's amazing. And thanks for sharing. I think. Uh, as as similar to most of the cohorts now I've profiled um, mm. uh, all of you guys, there's always this childhood exposure, right? Um, the mom or the yeah. dad, uh, a close family relative, that really helps you shape your entrepreneurial journey. So, um, but I think that's a, that's a theme here. You going yeah. to college or high school, was, was there an inflection point or rather will I say, was there a moment that really sparked you to start taking action to, to, to invest in an entrepreneurial endeavor an entrepreneur initiative mm -hmm. you have a moment in time that you decided that you know this is i really want to do this i want to put in my effort my energy into something into building something i mean right before you started the, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the current company you're running now um, yeah. was, was there any was there any experience or exposure before agro that really helped you to say you know this is something that um, I want to really do uh, in my in my in my life. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I was I was in college, two thousand and seven to two thousand and ten, 
and I recollect there was a particular course for the um, certificate in entrepreneurship. Yeah. And our lecturer was, was a businessman, even though he was a lecturer. Mm -hmm. And he made, he made the program very real. And at the end of the program, we had to develop a business plan. So I thought to myself, I mean, business, the business was exciting because there were many parts because I, I, get, I get bored of routine quite quickly. So I'm always on the go, finding new challenges, new stuff. So, I mean, that, that episode actually will be the inflection point for me because it brought many parts of what a business, that was my first time going beyond just the Idea. small scale business to, to having a very ambitious and audacious goal on paper. And for me, Everything came up to me, um, jumped to me in, in real time. I, I thought, well, with, with business, you could set up the organization where profits could meet impact, where people's lives could change, and where you could contribute your quota to, to life, to do something meaningful with your time here on earth. For me, I'd say that was, that was the time that it dawned on me that, man, I, could, I can do this. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Um, and just adding to that, so will you say that was your mentor and uh, someone that had helped just, or do you have other people along the way, uh, especially as we we'll go into agro, I think that's mm -hmm. well, who are the people that help shape uh, just your, um, not only help shape the vision, yeah. but also mm -hmm. help apply and, and get the company into fruition, um, you know, kind of guiding yeah. the Do you have anybody like that in your life, uh, especially later? Yeah, 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 yeah sure. I, I'm not sure time will time, that we have enough time to mention everybody, but I I am very big on um, recognizing the kind of help I got. I I wouldn't say I'm the most intelligent or the most ambitious person ever, but I've always drawn inspiration from real life experiences and the people I've come across. Yes. Um, I think about like 10 years after college, I've been working. So, I mean, working corporate world, yes. financial service, construction, I've done a bit of logistics company and all of these things shape my life and shape our perspective and ambition. So we call that company Wami Agro. Wami means to help in, in, in one of the dialects in Accra, the, the official language in Accra, which is Ga. Yes. Wami, means help and i am if there's anything i have more than anybody i'm better than i believe it's help it's not because i'm i'm better at anything i just believe i got the right help mm -hmm. um, yeah. not necessarily financial but the kind of opportunities my former superiors gave me i think also helped to shape yeah. my my way of doing business and my, my desires the, the kind of team I started Wami Agro with, I believe that kind of help made us get where we are now. Yep. So I'd say that every experience, whether good or bad, helped to shape us to where we are. And we are grateful for that opportunity. So yeah. definitely, I, I won't even attempt to list because <laughs> there are <laughs> lots. Yeah. I understand. I understand. And I think uh, you know, sometimes the people that make us um, who we are, you know, is um, they, 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 they are sometimes very comfortable being in the background. Um, and and yeah. I, I just shout out to them. I'm sure, I'm sure they know themselves when they listen to this. Episode, yes, yes, yes. You know? yes, uh, yes, yes. So, I mean, just tell us about uh, uh, what me, uh, uh, what me, agro. What me, agro. When, what me, yes. Can you just give us how it started? Um, the, just a brief. Um, um, you know, but, um, you know, a story of how you, how you built, the, how you started this company. Right. So having done about 10 years um, work as a business development professional across various sectors, um, somewhere in 2016 there about, I just thought I could bring uh, expertise or experience to bear to help SMEs um, with their business planning. So we're writing business plans, we're doing market research for, for small scale businesses who couldn't afford 
the likes of KPMGs. So that's where we started from as a consulting business. Then after two years, I realized that a lot of the work we were doing were tilted towards agri sector. So we're doing works for agro-based companies and it led us to do further research yep. into the sector. And then as a side gig, attempted farming and failed miserably and thought that um, there was more to it than, than I could, the eye could see. Mm -hmm. So we went behind the scenes to do further search and realized that the, the ordeals we had faced were not different from thousands and millions of other farmers. Exactly. In access to credit, all the right capital investments, in access to markets, I mean, the little or no technical information with regards to the, the best um, farming methods to use. We realized that these were problems that almost cut across all industries. So we thought, well, instead of jumping to another sector, we'd want to leverage on the our failure mm -hmm. and then bounce back and not just help ourselves, but help the millions of um, small scale farmers. In, in, in Ghana. So for us, one may it's grow, it's a reaction. Yep. It's a reaction to solve real problems we have, failed, we have, we have, we have, we have been confronted with. Okay. And so what we want to do is to, we are leveraging technology to help small scale farmers. So we, we realize that agri is, is a multi sectorial um, industry. Which means in agri industry you'd find engineering, you'd find um, finance, you find logistics. So these are all um, in, within the value chain. So we thought with tech we'll be able to link up the value chain to provide or help uh, improve the the agri sector. So yep. for us, that's how Wami Agro was born. It was just we decided to help small scale farmers to access credits and market. So we are doing that through tech and we are doing that gradually because um, tech adoption is quite low. So although our interventions are tech enabled, we make sure that they are very basic and a starting point for most of our farmers. Exactly. So that's the whole idea and we are at it. That's, that's great. That's great. And that's beautiful. Um, and you know, there's this, this it's, it's a very scalable thing. I think it's not just a Ghana thing, mm. it's Cameroon, yes, Nigeria, yes, yes, yes. Bond, Tanzania, yes. Zimbabwe. I've talked to very scalable, very scalable. 80% of our farmer population in Africa are small scale, 80%. 80%. And just in Ghana, we're talking about 4 million households. So, yep, very scalable. Very scalable. And you know, this goes beyond Africa, actually, Latin America, mm, 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 mm. Um, certainly. Uh, uh, ten years from now, I hope to see you in China or something, helping, <laughs> helping, yeah. helping small scale farmers there. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think there's a global essence to it. But you know, starting from home is a, uh, it's, it's very, it's a very beautiful experience. Um, mm. uh, helping people uh, very close uh, to begin with, then you can expand globally. Yeah. So, uh, meaningful, sure. meaningful work. Um, so just to add on that, did you have? Um, um, what are some of the challenges you experienced? I know uh, mm. challenges are far too many, um, <laughs> <laughs> but can you just, uh, because I think one of the essence why I ask this question is to help people mm. understand that entrepreneurship is not easy, but it's, it's when you go through these challenges that you, you get to learn a lot about yourself and how, yeah. how important yes. the work is if you're really passionate about it. So did you have- yeah. any Yes, 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 certainly, I mean, agriculture in Africa has been a way of life. Yes. Of course, it's culture. There's culture at the end. So it's very much a way of life for us before it's a business, yeah. before it became a business. So just like life itself, there are complex problems with agri. There's unpredictability. There's, there's this um, unattractiveness to financial institutions. There's the way we've portrayed agriculture as the poor man's job yes. in Africa. Yeah. Anytime you see an agric magazine, it's a poor woman with very scanty produce struggling and the pictures are not, excuse me to say sexy. 
Yes. I mean, you see a doctor and the whole environment is so attractive, but you see a farmer on a magazine and it's just like another poor person asking for aid. Yeah. So that that whole that whole stigma has been one of the biggest problems for for, for a lot of young people in, in, in Ghana and Africa for that matter. I believe that if we're to point our biggest challenge, it will be it will it will be the stigma. It will because people are comfortable, young people, graduates, are comfortable to secure a job that will pay less than 50 or $100 yep. in a very good air-conditioned office, white color job, as compared to an agri um, a farm opportunity that could pay even higher. Yeah, you mean in Ghana? Just because, yes, yes, yes. No, let, let me say dollars, just so that for <laughs> the sake of the global community. Yes, yes in, in, in Ghana, like undergrads will be happy to 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 take on a hundred dollar job than to go and farm because farming has been portrayed as the poor man's job. Yep. So it, it's giving us a bit of difficulty when it comes to finding the requisite talent to work with because it's not too attractive. Then also our financial institutions are adverse to their great sector in their portfolio of. Um, facility or credit, you realize that agri is always less than 5% of their loans go to agri companies, mainly because of how we've treated agri. We've, we've made it, it's, it's been too risky. It's looked too risky. But I believe that those of us who are playing in the value chain, like Wami Agro, using tech to de risk agri, is, is, is changing the narrative over the course of time. But definitely, the, the challenges are not over. I, I like the one you mentioned about just the like the perception of of, of farming. Um yeah. it's a big piece to it. And honestly, too, like um how 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 sometimes Africans in diaspora think of farming. Um yeah, it's, it's a little bit whole uh, and cutlass, you know. <laughs> yes, whole and cutlass. And you know, it, it, yeah. it said you no, know, the, the, the the it doesn't appeal a lot to um, no. But the honest truth is that that's where the, the potential is. That's where they... The, the, yes, yes, yes. Just to go... I, I don't know why Africa imp would import $35 billion worth of food last year. Yes. It's just surprising. For 60% of the arable land in the world is in Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, this is where malnutrition and poverty is also, it, it also resides. I mean, with the resources we have, we may not be able to build rockets or skyscrapers, but we can at least produce the food we can we want to eat so that we are not reliant on yes. countries like Israel who have less than 30,000 km, um, kilometers of land. And we have to rely on them for food. It's, it's sad. Can you please, is very sad. Sorry to interrupt. Can you please share, like, what do you think, what, what do you think uh, the, the one is the, what do you think is the 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 the, the reason mm. that people are more confident in foreign products than in locally made products? Is it just a perception thing? Is it like the better? Mm. What do you think is the reason? I know this is an off question, but I think I think I, I think it's a mix of things. Mm -hmm. First of all, is the adoption of the culture. Okay. So the movies we watch. Yes. Make it appealing to have a sandwich than a boiled uh, maize or corn for breakfast. I mean, from the inception, once we are we are we are we are enjoying Chinese movies, American movies, we are happy about their food. It's 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 a plus to have British breakfast, but it's not a plus to have um, breakfast in Accra, uh, cocoa and uh, bread, you know, porridge, that kind of thing. So I think it's the adoption of the culture. Then also, it's as, as Africans, we haven't been able to tell our story well. Yep. We, we haven't been able to tell the story well. So the younger generation have hung on to another kind of story. Yep. But, but I believe that if we're to come together as, as Africans and say, when we are studying the transformation of nations, mm -hmm. it's from one stage to the other. They started with, so the first industrial revolution, second, third, and then the fourth. We are in the fourth now. But yeah. some way, somehow, we are being, we are being, in, we are being 
indoctrinated to think that we can just kill the first, second, and third and reach the fourth. Yeah. I don't believe in that. I believe that before we get to the fourth, let's start the first right, which is the primary production. We'll yeah. move on to processing. Then we can move on to the information age. And then we can we can do the fourth industrial revolution because we've not gone through the ranks. Maybe yeah. that's that's the biggest problem. So yeah. the culture and then our path to the transformation is not clear. Fair, fair and enough. so we are just those two. I don't think we are doing any good. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, so in, in terms of yeah, the uh, with all with all this going on, uh, how do you what, what's your vision for the? How do you want a uh, 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 Wami Agro to, to play a role in transforming this um, this space? Like in the next two yes, years. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, um, we, we want to contribute our quota. Mm -hmm. I know Wami Agro may not be able to solve all the challenges, but at least we want to reach a million farmers across Africa. Yeah. We want to close the financial gap. Yes. We want to close the knowledge gap. We want to be one of the companies that will be dominant with the AFTA program, the AF, the CFTA program. We want one of the companies that will take the opportunity to the doorstep of small scale farmers okay. because there's a tendency of leaving them behind and um, just dealing with the commercial scale farmers. So we want to be the company that is seven women and young children who are at the bottom of the pyramid of the economic ladder. Yep. We are, we are happy to do this because we, we are the intersection of profit and impact. Exactly. We have been profitable from our first year. At the same time, we've impacted till date, onboarded about 10,000 farmers, and we are looking to scale to a million in the next five years. Wow. And we are, we are happy to take on these accelerator programs like the Builders of Africa's Future. We are excited to be part because of the platform yep. we, 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 we are going to be exposed to. And just because I'm talking to Jacob of Duess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, hope, I, hope, I hope I'm playing a uh, small role in the bigger vision um, of, of this. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for you. Uh, when you talk about million farmers, are you based in, is this just Ghana or, because I know that the millions and millions of farmers, uh, it was Africa. Millions and millions, yeah. Which are millions there? and millions. We're looking across Africa. We're looking across Africa. Okay, okay. We want to be a Pan-African company. Definitely. Please come to Cameroon. Um, we can't wait. Yeah. Are you in Cameroon now? No, I'm based in Boston. Boston now. Okay, okay. Maybe when you're going to Cameroon now, you just let me know. I'll meet you. <laughs> This thing you, uh, no thank you. Thanks for giving us that background. So, uh, this part of the uh, uh, podcast, mm -hmm. is so for us to kind of know, um, to kind of mm -hmm. guide, uh, give a words of advice, uh, inspiration, mm -hmm. inspiration. But I think uh, you have gotten to a point where mm -hmm. I calls are on you, and mm -hmm. look up to you uh, as a point of reference on how to build a business. So, I think my first question is, what what's mm -hmm. your What's, what's the advice you give to a young uh, African or Africans in diaspora or even a Chinese yeah. who is trying to build a business in Africa or invest in Africa, mm. Japanese or Vietnamese? What's yeah. the, what the advice you give them about Africa as a country, as a continent, my bad, or Ghana as a country? Sure. Uh, what, what advice mm. you, will you give what to What advice people? to young people? Yeah. I think it will be three advice. Wow, you have three. <laughs> Yeah, just three, only three. <laughs> number one, learn. Mm -hmm. Number two, learn. Number three, learn. Wow. Just learn. What we're doing now, I haven't, I didn't study it in college or high school. I just learned the mm -hmm. industry. I just learned about the sector. We just need to learn. I believe that the path to success has been re-echoed by many billionaires and millionaires. It's not a new path. So for anybody who wants to be successful, just get the notes and learn. Yes. Not just academic learning, but observational learning. Learning from people who have been there and done that. I got the inspiration from a Ghanaian company that has, has been helping farmers and they have reached over a million already. Wow. And, and, and that's farmer line. They've, they've reached over a million farmers across Sub-Saharan Africa. 
And I think last month or so, they raised about $12.9 million. And, and these are people I learned from, just inspired the last six years, what they've done. Companies like Thrive and Greg, who've raised over $50 million. Companies like um, Twiga, who've raised over $50 million and are doing huge things. And these are not hidden. I mean, you go on the internet, just learn how to start an agribusiness, just learn. Ask people who are doing it. Just learn, learn, learn. Right. I think the different the, the size of your dream is very much dependent on the depth of your knowledge. Yes. So you can only dream to take on the world if you know about the world. Exactly. Exactly. Else it's just a wish. Yeah. Exactly. Do you know the funny thing is that uh the, the one of the co-founders of 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 Farmer Land um mm. came to MIT Africa Innovate Conference. And I interesting. I, I met him before. That would be Aloysius. Aloysius, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're in the same college. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's incredible. Yes, I, I got to you. He, he was at the panel and, and, I, mm. and I got to hear his story. So just an incredible story. Mm. Yeah, yes, yes. When I thought of you, I thought of him before the podcast. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Uh, great guy. Great guy. Um, no, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. In, in terms of, um, um, I think one, one question that uh, I hope you can share with us is uh, have there been any uh statement or has someone said something to you that really really woke you up if you know what i mean something that said <laughs> you know like you know sometimes we are sleeping you know <laughs> yeah. there's something that someone says that you realize that you know you know life is yeah you have to take things seriously have there been a moment or a shift uh, as a result of, of a statement or a book uh, that yeah. that made you say, hmm, I have to be some. Hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't remember who exactly said that, but I think there's one statement I really remember and it just um, keeps me up and going. I, I let me try and paraphrase. It says ships ships don't sink because of the water around them. Ships sink because of the water that gets in them. Mm. So don't let what's happening around you get inside you and yeah. weigh you down. Yeah. So a lot happens around us. I mean, struggling financially, struggling emotionally, a lot, a lot of problems. Yeah. But the moment we allow it to get into us, it, it, it sinks our ship. Yes. So for, for me, it's something I always remember that, hey, no matter what's going on around you, if you don't give it the permission to get into you, you, you will float, you won't sink, and no condition is permanent. Okay. I am saying this because I've had a, I had a very difficult um, childhood. I'd say, I, I, talk, I spoke about my, my mom, who she passed when I was a teenager. Oh, sorry. And I mean, it, it was a very difficult, um, childhood, I mean, going through secondary school to the university, I had to fend for myself um, and contribution from some family members here and there. Yeah. But all of that, I am happy that today I look back and I have good testimonies because I could have allowed that broken home um, effect get inside of me that, that I would fall for bad company. Yes. But I, I believe some of these words that don't let what's around you get into you, I mean, those are things that, and I'm a Christian and believe in the Holy Bible, yeah. and the words in the Bible give me a lot of inspiration to, to persevere. So yeah, I, I always like to listen to inspirational things. It, sometimes they sound fanciful, but they yeah. do they do work in us. Um, one of my favorite podcast, um, no, one, not podcast. One of my favorite um, events in the tech, TED Talk. I like to follow TED Talk a lot. Yes. Because of the random nature, I mean, and then things like Cora, yeah, um, these are exciting things that I think young people should should be interested in. Awesome, awesome. No, I mean, thanks so much for sharing, mm. and also thank you too. Vulnerable, vulnerable there. Um, if mm. I had to ask, if someone who knows you well, mm. right, what would that person yeah. say about you? In terms of well, that person say about me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, it, it, well, if the person knows me well, 
Um, maybe they'll say, they'll say, the first thing they'll say is a very humorous person. <laughs> and then also they may say, I'm, I'm friendly. Um, and then you can't, one thing you can't take away from me is a hard work. I mean, yeah. I, 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 I think I, I just work hard. Not be, I'm a go-getter. I believe anybody who is with me will know that. Yes. If I said I'll do something, it, I don't know. I don't know what will stop me. I, I just get it. Even if it takes years, I'll get it. Uh, and so I think those, those, those are things that have come to define my life. Uh, the, the humor and the hard work. I, I, I think those two eight uh, 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 attributes, I, I, I believe, will be with me for a long time. I, I can I can I can see I can see the humor humor that you have. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the, the hard work pay the hard work is evident, right? You're part of the business of Africa's future. But not only that, yeah. I can sense that you're really passionate and you really mm. want to make an impact to helping a million uh, farmers. Yeah. My, my my grandfather said hard work breaks no bone. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it was a military man and he wanted to, to get you a lot of work he said hard work breaks no bone just do this <laughs> let's do it, let's do it. and you know sometimes as we are kids you know we get so annoyed and frustrated mm -hmm. when they say stuff like that mm -hmm. but when you get older you realize that these people yeah. well they, they, were, they were not get that either to be gazetted exactly 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 mm -hmm. for us to, to kind of run around down here and thank you so much for just sharing um, okay Shares Thank you. Um, how do you see the the future of of Africa? You know, how, how do you see? Um, I know you are playing your own role, a very critical mm. role, building uh, to create opportunities and, and leveraging uh, some of the greatest uh, asset that we have, right? Our land, mm. our weather, our yeah, our, resources, our resources. Exactly. How do you see what's what's your what's your vision for for Africa? What do you see as the the, the mm. what do you think Africa will be? Provided that we all contribute, we all make an effort. I'm not trying to be negative. Mm. Look at the positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. How do you see? It? You know, we we are we are, we are running behind most of the other continents. I think we're. <laughs> I think I think I think Africa needs to visit history. Yeah. Re I think African leaders need to revisit history and ask ourselves two questions. Yeah. Do we want to continue or repeat history <laughs> or would want to rewrite the next history? Yeah. Because in the next 50 years, another or our next 100 years, a new Afri a new group of people will be called Africans. Yeah. Most of us will be dead by then, the next 100 years. Yeah. And that new group of Africans yeah. will look back the last 100 years and say, our leaders allowed certain foreign nationals, our leaders allowed certain foreign nationals to take away our resources, our gold illegally, yeah. uh, small scale mining illegally. The next 100 years, what do our African leaders want to remember it for? I, I think. In like I think some two thousand three thousand years ago, I think the is it the ten hundreds twelve hundreds? I read about the Moors of Spain. Yep. The Moors who went to conquer Europe. These were Africans yep. who went to colonize Europe. Said that they brought development. I was reading an account where in Europe they had to bath like once a month or something, and it took the Africans to go there and change the status quo. And this was like a few thousand years ago. Yes. But in the last hundreds of years, we've also been colonized. And the question is, do we, do Af our African leaders must ask themselves these questions. Do we want to continue the history we have today or do we want to rewrite a new history for the next generation? It's rather unfortunate that corruption is, is widespread across Africa. Yes. But we've had some good sons Kwame Nkrumah, Nelson Mandela. Maybe it's time for African leaders to also ask, do they want to join that Hall of Fame? Yes. Because in as much as we want to say um, the Africans' um, character and all of that, no, I think it's leadership. It's leadership. It's yeah. leadership that will tolerate certain character. It's okay. leadership that will allow institutions to work. It's leadership that provides the requisite punitive measures 
if we give the African leaders to the Europeans or the developed world, I'm sure we'll have the same problems you're having in Africa over there. Yeah. The only reason their leadership, the leadership in the West is getting results is because they want to get results. Yeah. So in nations where their leaders want to get results, they are getting the results. Yeah. I see what Rwanda is doing. There may be some flaws, but we are seeing the transformation. We are seeing the transformation that some other African leaders are doing. And I believe that we, we need to decide that we want to write a new history. Until then, I don't see where we are going. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. No, I, I think, you know, you alluded to something very important, right? Um, mm. I think, and just to add on to that, I think the work you're doing um, in a way will create a sense of responsibility, right? Because once you, you're doing well, you're doing good, you build a very successful mm. company, and you start drawing in a lot of international um, um, response, and eyeballs, yeah. and investment, the government would be like, mm. oh, wait, I need to invest in young people because people like Caleb mm. are bringing in a lot of FDI. Mm. That it's helping them because you know you pay taxes and all that. It, it kind of helps yes. Yes. employment, employment, and employment. You know, impact helping women. Um, mm. So, as much as these leaders are having this, um, have to meet up to the par. You are actually already making a huge difference. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Every school. Yes, yes. Um, there, 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 there are many youths in Africa that. Uh, are doing something, especially those from the diaspora. I'm happy about them wanting to return and contribute to their country. I, I, I believe that the easiest way to, to leapfrog will be to leverage on tech. Yes. Because if you look at the last 20 years, what Amazon, Facebook, Alphabet, IBM have done yes. with tech, it, it could happen in Africa. Yes. It's, it's just, with tech, we can bridge. We can bridge it. Yes, 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 yes. I agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, no, uh, Paris, for you, what do you want your legacy to be? My legacy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought that was like, yeah, I got, I got, I guess our, like our dads. <laughs> my legacy. <laughs> well, I, I, I was. I want my legacy to be. Maybe millions of farmers would, 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 would remember me and say, this was, the, this was the gentleman who led a team to transform the story of agriculture in Africa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that will be a legacy I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to see. I, I, think, I think the great thing is that you're already doing it. Small, small, just petty, petty. <laughs> small, small. I thought that was a Korean thing. We always say small, small. This is a Ghana. <laughs> it's a Ghana term, you know. Small, yeah. small. We are, we are very modest people. We just small. <laughs> small. <laughs> petty, compare. Small, small. No, uh, but but genuinely, I think you're doing big things. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm humble. But thank you, thank you for all the work you're doing. Thank you for your time. Thanks for stopping mm. by to us within our podcast. If I get to be in Ghana someday, I'd love to mm. and have, have you. Mm. I would invite on the podcast for any updates. Uh, please feel free to always mm. reach out and uh, any way I can mm. make sure that your work is heard, uh, appreciated, wow. uh, and also you know pull bringing in stakeholders that can help grow your company. Um, I'm more than happy mm. to, to be an ally for your work. So thank you so much for everything you do and. Um, thanks so much, Jacob. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for the opportunity and uh, I'm sure we'll keep in touch in the future. Definitely, most definitely. So everyone listening, this is at the end of our, of our wonderful collaboration with uh, African Diaspora Network. And uh, we had we ended up with Caleb uh, Edwards from uh, Wagpin Agro. Great, just an amazing um, entrepreneur. You guys can have heard this episode. And we want to thank you again for just being part of this series. Uh, we we love to hear from you. You can always email us at jacob at Um, But thank you again for just being part of this series. And thank you again, Caleb, and everyone at African Desperate Network. Um, 
Kali, uh, 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 last, 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 you are the last, last entrepreneur. You yes, have, yes, yes. I have to say something for the, the Business of Africa Future cohort, man. Business, so, uh, I, think, I think it's been a great cohort. It's been a great um, accelerator program. The instructions or learnings have been intensive. Um, the assignments have been intensive. Sometimes I have to stop <laughs> going like miss the deadline. And it's been intensive and, and, and informative. Um, and not not forgetting the is it exposure? Yes. Uh, every now and then there's an article on LinkedIn, and I think the exposure has been good. I'm 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 just happy to be part. I'm just happy to be part, and I I, I know that subsequent ones will be great as well. Definitely, definitely. I can mm. I agree more. So thank you yeah. again, Thanks to all of you, yeah. one, Deborah, um, all the amazing, all the team, yeah, all the whole amazing team. people, amazing people. So thank you all. Yeah. I'll see you. Yeah. See everyone, all the listeners. Thank you as well. Uh, real appreciated, and I will see everyone in the next. Mm. Episode. Thank you again, Caleb. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.